that's because we should drive according to traffic laws, just like our planets move around according to Kepler's law. Good question, little kitty. By the time we drive home, let me explain to you all about this vital astronomical question. What are Kepler's laws of planetary motion? Zoom in. In 1609, the German astronomer Johannes Kepler published his book Astronomia Nova, outlining his discoveries which are now called Kepler's first two laws of planetary motion. In this book, he explained how all the planets in the solar system follow certain laws to move around the sun. But before we jump into the laws, there are a few basic things you need to know about a shape called the ellipse that has two focus points called foci, which is a plural of focus. The foci always lie on the major or longest axis, spaced equally on each side of the center. But why are we learning about ellipses? That's because Kepler's first law states that all the planets revolve around the Sun in elliptical orbits, having the Sun at one of the foci. In other words, the path these planets follow during a revolution is always elliptical shape, with the Sun located at one of the foci points of the major axis. Isn't it easy, my friends? Now, let us see the second law. Imagine a line appearing from the Sun and joining a planet. This line is called the radius vector. Now, let's assume this planet moves from position P1 to position P2 in a certain interval of time. Now, along with the position of the planet, the position of the radius vector has also changed and its movement has covered a certain area as well, which we will call A1. Now, let's move this planet to the opposite side where it travels from position P3 to P4 in the same amount of time denoted by the alphabet T. And the area covered by the radius vector is denoted by A2. And you'll be surprised to know, according to Kepler's second law, area A1 will be equal to area A2. Yes, the second law states that the radius vector drawn from the Sun to the planet sweeps out equal areas in equal intervals of time. Though Kepler was able to see the smooth ride of the planets, his personal life was going through many ups and downs. That's why it took him almost a decade to publish his next book called Harmonices Mund, in which he explained the third law. But before we learn about it, let us again go back to our elliptical shaped orbit and draw two axes on it, the minor axis and the major axis, whose half distance is called the semi-major axis. Now, as we know, a planet denoted by the alphabet P takes one revolution around the Sun in T time, also called the time period. So Kepler's third law says, the square of the time period of revolution of a planet around the Sun in an elliptical orbit is directly proportional to the cube of its semi-major axis. In simple words, it explains how long a planet takes to finish one revolution depending on its position from the Sun. Meaning, as a planet's distance from the Sun increases, 
the time they take to orbit the sun increases rapidly. And no matter what, for every planet, the square of its time period will always be the same as the cube of the length of its semi-major axis. And that's it. Easy marks for you all, right here. Trivia time! Did you know Johannes Kepler was born prematurely and was a feeble child with weak vision? Not just that, at the age of six, Johannes was sent to school but was soon taken out to earn money for the family by working as a waiter in a hotel. Hope you learned something new today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Hmm, what are you doing, Kitty? Kitty follows the rope. <laughs> Never mind.